All right, guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to dive into what easel should you buy? Now this is a popular question I've gotten both here on YouTube and at my workshops that I teach, and that is, what easel should I buy? Luckily, the answer is super easy. I know exactly what easel you should buy. It's just as simple as... Ah, dang, technical difficulties. There isn't some magical shop where the easel picks you. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? The reality is the only person who can answer that question is you. So here in the part one video, I'm gonna go over kind of an overview and some key questions to ask yourself that might guide you along this path to finding the perfect easel. It's the same logic that I've used to buy all of my easels. So let's get into it. Question one is, drum roll, what's your budget? I know, uh, I know that is not a glamorous or exciting question to ask, but it is really important no matter what you're buying, whether it's ice cream, shoes, or easels, what you're willing to spend does matter. But there is some nuance to the budgeting question. And some of that is, you know, if you're starting out and you maybe are a beginner or a hobbyist looking to get into this, you might not be willing to drop a ton of money onto an easel. And here's some low entry level options for you there. Uh, you can get as crazy as even an Altoid can if you're really feeling thrifty, about 279. People do paint paintings with these little things, so check that out on Instagram. It's really pretty incredible what they make. I don't go that route though. Other things you can consider are cigar boxes. They're pretty easy to come by and make a great little Peshad box. Um, another really important thing just to consider is other painters in your area. I, for one, have a lot of easels that I'm more than willing to loan out to people. And so just ask around other artists if they've got loaners they can let you borrow out and see what, see what you think. So don't forget that. Keep your eyes peeled at Goodwills or thrift houses because they have easels occasionally. So there's some low entry level things you can jump into for a budget. Another really important place is just building your own. If you're crafty and like to do that kind of stuff, there's a lot of plans. James Gurney has a really cool little paint box you can make and otherwise just get creative with it. It's really not too hard, especially if you go the tripod mounting way. All you need is this little quarter inch by 20 threaded insert. There's a bunch of different ones online. Check those out. They just get punched into some wood, add some tension hinges, and you've got yourself a Peshad box that you can really get out and be proud of and have fun and save some money. I've built a few of my own that way. Here's the version one Prada, which is not to be confused with Strata. If you're excited to buy an easel, you've saved up some money and you're ready to get into this, just get painting, not bother with all the extra things. Remember that a lot of these are handmade or have some lead time in shipping. So just be aware of that. If you got a paint out or anything coming up, get your orders in early. And with the budgeting piece, if you are at all a semi-professional or professional artist, the expense of an easel is really an investment. You will make money with this thing. Even if that's coffee shop shows or crafty markets, the easel is the main tool you use to get paintings made. So I think it's worth an investment every time. I've always kind of gone on a limb when I bought my easels and I've never regretted it. And I've always paid for the easel pretty quickly just with my sales made by getting out there and getting after it. So keep that in mind. This is a worthwhile purchase. Going out on a limb is something you probably won't regret. The last little note in the budget realm is that you kind of get what you pay for. Easels aren't overwhelmingly branded into some niche thing where there's lots of overpriced baloney. Really, the features are pretty consistent and the quality is really high, so you're not gonna really get ripped off. If you spend a lot of money on an easel, you're probably gonna get a really high quality product, which is awesome. The saying I've always loved is buy once, cry once. So that's the money part. Know what you wanna spend. Question two is a bit more complex. That's the kind of where and the how are you gonna use this thing? Put your old thinking hat on and really envision the places you're gonna be painting as you go. Are you more of an urban sketcher? You're gonna be painting on crowded sidewalks or are you gonna be hiking up trails and carrying your painting gear on your back like me? That will really funnel down some of these options that you say, I wanna fit it in a suitcase because I'm gonna go to Europe. You know, consider where you're going with this thing and what's gonna be a factor in it regarding 
the size, the mobility, how packed down it gets. Do some research in that regard because that has a lot of consequence and how much you're gonna enjoy using it while you're out there. So the next big part of it is the how. And that's regarding, you know, specifically a thing I think about is what size painting. How big are you gonna go working with this? Do you need a big French easel back here that can hold a huge canvas? Or do you need something tiny just for a little six by eight? You know, consider what your main goals are when you're going out. Are you trying to make big classy paintings? You're just getting little studies. You know, you should kind of know what you want when you're gonna jump into an easel like that. And another piece with how you use the easel is whether or not you're gonna have it as a studio and plein air setup. You know, something like the French easel is great for that because they're big and sturdy and can, you know, they look kind of nice, you know, they're pretty little designs. So if you're gonna put it up in a guest room or your living room to paint a still life, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I do caution against that because if the sun's setting and you wanna get out and paint, it's a real bummer to have to take down all your gear and repack it up all the time. I leave my plein air stuff pretty much staged and in a backpack ready to go. And my studio easel set up with what I'm already working on. I think that's the right way to go long run, but we all gotta work with where we're at under a budget, consider if you're gonna use this in the studio realm or not. I so, didn't get that. Could you try again? No. Okay. Turn off. If you've picked your budget and you've picked the where and the how that you're gonna use your easel, more than likely you've narrowed it down quite a bit. And this is where question three gets a little more nitpicky. Question three is what special features are important to you? These are the more nuanced things, like its design, tripod or not, its workmanship, or where it's made and how it looks, and then the final piece is style, if that matters much. So in design, with this tripod situation, some easels come with legs, or they just are gigantic legs on their own. So if you don't wanna be worrying about a tripod, there's definitely planar painting options that way. Other easels you can just carry in your hand. So don't worry if you don't wanna buy a tripod. But if you're gonna buy a tripod and you're worried about this design, you know, the Day Tripper, the Strata Mark II, the Gorilla Campaign Box, they all are in that gravity locking design. You know, they hinge off of the legs. You're gonna need a big tripod for that. Just take my word on it. Are you struggling with back pain caused by your bad decision making? Did you not listen to Ken and still bought an undersized tripod for your easel? Well, cry no more. Ken is going to show you exactly how to fix all your problems. It's by buying the right size tripod for your easel. Problems referring to lower back pain caused by too small tripod. For problems like bad pain, takes marriage issues, no money, no time for art, car problems, or bad haircuts are unsolved. Okay, and these other smaller laptop designs, these hinging models, they can work on a smaller tripod pretty easily. The main thing to consider with these tripods universally is to make sure they have hooks on the bottom. You don't want to be stuck in a windstorm and not have a way of holding down your easel, because if you have spent a lot of money on this thing, having it fly off into the rocks is really, it's, it's not very fun probably ruin your day. So the next special feature is workmanship. And this is again a broad range. I simplify it down to basically something that's factory produced, whether that's overseas or wherever, it's just mass produced. Uh, quality materials could be questionable. Hardware less particularly sensitive in that way where the screws will thread out. You know, that stuff does matter and you'll probably buy twice if you buy really cheap mass produced things. That's just my overall cautionary tale. But the next little category would be the you know, manufactured in America. The Yugo here is a great example of that because it is manufactured, you know, a CNC machine makes most of that. So it's not hand chiseled or anything, but it's still made in America and they have to do a quality control system that's probably a little bit more reliable than something built overseas. And the top tier, in my opinion, is handcrafted in America. That's where artisans are chiseling things out and fitting them together perfectly and they tend to stand by their products because they put a lot of pride and hard work into them. I personally try to buy Made in America when I can. And so next is style and vibe. You wanna go with that classic, timeless, old school look? Or maybe you're more of that sleek, modern type. Do you wanna dance? So that part's really up to you. And it doesn't matter that much. The biggest thing with that is usually, whether it's wood or metal, a lot of the metal easels are very cold and industrial, but they're invincible. Wooden easels can have a more classic look, but they are maybe more prone to breaking just because of the nature of it. But whatever suits your fancy. 
All right, and lastly, question four is accessories. All right, you've really narrowed down your easel selection at this point and you're just getting nitpicky, but these accessories are important and they often tie back to the budgeting piece because many of these easels have lots of accessories you can add on, whether it's extra storage space, umbrellas, paint holders, paper towel holders, all kinds of stuff. And with that is added on price. So if the easel starts at 300, you could get yourself up to four or 500 pretty quick. And don't forget, you're gonna need some of these other classic accessories. You know, things like a wet panel holder. These are very important and they gotta fit the size pieces you're gonna use. You'll be so grateful you have them when you got a wet oil painting in your hands and you're going through grass, trust me. Your next is turp jars. Some places make really small magnetic ones that click on. Other ones you can have plastic that have screw on lids. There's tons of options with turp jars and they do matter. So do your research in what accessories like that. And you're gonna need a method to transport your brushes. I love these little things. They screw open and close, keep everything really clean. Some of these easels have storage built in. The French easel being the prime example. You can leave your brushes or paints just right in there. So you might not even need a backpack or extra storage. So keep that in mind with how you are gonna haul this around. Little more compact easels can fit just in a small backpack. Other easels might need a bigger backpack. I love having lots of extra pouches to carry paper towels and all that extra gizmos you can carry. Lunch is good too. Don't wanna keep it right with your turpentine just in case it leaks. Pro tip. So that wraps it up. That's the Ken logic to buying an easel. I'm not the be all end all expert on this, but I have been at the plein air thing for about 15 years and I've used a whole array of easels, starting with the French easel back here. And I've worked my way through many different models. I went from the French easel to the EZL little tiny Peshad box. It was a little kit that came with a bag and everything. And I took it to Europe and painted and it was awesome. My first real professional box that I got into when I was a you know, really actually starting a landscape painting career was this a la prima Peshad box right here. It's been incredible to work with, served me so well. The only thing that's ever happened was I broke the glass because I dropped the whole thing on the ground, but the easel was unfazed. Then I went to the small format easels. I got the Strata Micro, which was tiny. After that, I moved into the prolific painter boxes, the Day Tripper and the Fly on the Wall. The Fly on the Wall was also tiny. I ended up using this guy a lot more. Then went on a little phase where I made my own easels. Uh, they're they're pretty bad, but it was a fun experiment and uh, gave me a lot of respect for these guys that do make easels. Then I went with the Yugo, and then just recently on the Openbox M, which is actually on loan to another painter, so it's not here for this video, sadly. So after that long list, I, I can admit I have a problem, but I'm on the quest to find the perfect easel, and I'm doing it so you don't have to. And if you want to go on the quest too, I mean, seriously guys, all these easels are fun to use and great. But in an effort to make this whole thing easier for you, I've been developing a spreadsheet. Now this sheet, you can sort these major categories down and funnel down these options until you can find the easel that has the right features for you. So the part two video is going to be all about that spreadsheet, how to use it. And there'll be a link up here or of course down in the descriptions. Go check it out, please. And let me know what you think. So there you have it. Answer those four questions, budget, where and how, special features and accessories, you'll have found yourself into a great easel and you can get out there and get painting. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something too. If you've already found the perfect easel or you go through my spreadsheet and see something I'm missing, please let me know, put them in the comments. It'll help other artists find those easels and just be great input. At the end of the day, it's not the easel that makes the artist. So get out there and get painting and have some fun. Thanks for watching, thanks for being here. See you next time. Oh hey, one last thing. I've got more easel reviews coming and plenty of art content on my page. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more.